All right, here we go. So I got a new uh, a new method here for making my videos at home without the smart board. We'll see how all this works. I'll have to be patient with me here as I kind of muddle my way through this. All right, so anyway, so today uh, we're going to learn about how to deal with uh, problems in which there's a non-constant acceleration. All right, and specifically we'll be talking about how to use the derivative. So just really quickly, I know you guys are different points in your calculus classes. Um, if you've not yet watched video 2.1 and a half, I gave a quick crash course in how to take a derivative and what a derivative is. Um, so if you're at all sketchy on that, it's probably worth going back and watching. All right, so here's the deal. We're going to start out with something we know from last year. All right, so suppose I give you uh, a position time graph like this. All right, um, so just by looking at the position time graph, we can see that it's a straight line. That tells us the velocity is constant. Um, since the velocity is constant, we ought to be able to find it, right? So remember, um, when you calculate velocity, I guess specifically um, to find average velocity, but here our average velocity and our velocity are the same since the velocity is constant, right? So let's do this. So our velocity is equal to our average velocity, right? And that's equal to our displacement over time, right? So let's pick two points. Let's pick, I don't know, how about this point and this point, right? So between those two points, my position is going from 0 up to 4. So my displacement's 4 meters. The time that that takes is 10 seconds. So it looks like the velocity here is 0 0.4 meters per second, right? Now, I want you to notice that what I just did there is really the exact same thing as doing rise over run, right? Oops, I don't want that. Is rise over run, right? If I did rise over run, I would... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if I did rise over run, I would have... Oops, I would have rise is 4 meters and run is 10 seconds. So my rise or run would give me 4 meters over 10 seconds, right? So this is the same as our slope, right? Okay, and then furthermore, it's worth noting that our, um, our, our vertical axis intercept, I guess, is 0 here, right? So if I was to think in terms of vertical axis equals slope times horizontal axis plus y-intercept, well, let's see what I would get. My ver This is weird. My vertical axis here is position, right? Vertical axis is position. So my y is actually x equals my slope, which is, we just found that, 0 0.4. Uh, my x-axis is time plus my y-axis, or plus my uh, y-intercept, which we decided was zero, right? So here we go. Position at time t is 0.4t, right? Okay. So anyway, the point here is uh, we were able to look at a position time graph and A, get an equation for the position time graph line, just because it's a line, that's geometry, and more importantly, we came up with an equation for the velocity at a given time. And since the velocity here is constant, the velocity is always 0.4, okay? Um, and then just if it helps any, here is in fact the equation for this line, which I had to hide at the beginning here. So here you go. There's the equation for this line, which does in fact match with this, which makes everybody happy. <laughs> all right. So next of all, suppose I could be something like this, which I forgot to hide my equation again. All right, so when you look at this, the first thing you notice is it's curved. All right, we learned last year in honors that uh, when you look at a curved position time graph, it's not straight. That means your velocity is changing, right? So here there's some acceleration. I don't know if the acceleration is constant or not. All right, um, now if I told you the shape of this graph was a parabola, then we could use some kinematics equations um, and figure out what the acceleration was and go from there. All right, um, so let's do this though. Basically, what you'll find is there are two different types of problems that, that you'll be given. There'll be problems where you're given a graph and problems where you're giving an equation. All right. Here, early in the year, I want to give you both because I want you to understand that, um, I guess in this case, I want you to understand what the graph is going to look like when um, your velocity is not constant. And in this case, it's curved, right? So suppose I give you this. All right. So here's the equation for this graph. All right. Now. Suppose I asked you, what's the velocity of this object after, I don't know, say six seconds? All right, suppose I wanted the velocity right at this instant, okay? Well, I mean, I guess if I wanted to, I could find the rise over the 
run, but what that would actually give me is the average velocity. Okay, because anytime you use, I mean, that rise really is your change in position, and the run is your time, right? So anytime you do rise over run, you're finding the slope of a straight line. In this case, you'd be finding the slope of this straight line here, from here to here. All right, so if I found that slope, I would be just simply finding the slope of that line, and that's not what I want, okay? What I actually want to know is the derivative. I want to know how steep the line is at this specific point, right? So that's the derivative, okay? So remember, the derivative is, is the slope, right? So here's a new thing, and many of you may have learned this in, in calculus. So it turns out that if you take the derivative of position with respect to time, it gives you the velocity at a given time, okay? So here's my equation for my position. So the derivative with respect to t of position at time t is the derivative with respect to t, right? Why am I saying with respect to t? I'm sorry. So anytime you take a derivative, the, the top part of your d whatever is your vertical axis, right? So I'm taking the derivative of my vertical axis position, which is x, with respect to whatever's on the horizontal axis, which is time. Okay, so the idea here is that the top part always corresponds with your vertical axis, and the bottom part always corresponds with your horizontal axis. Always, 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 always. Okay. So now what I want to do is take the derivative of x. And so here's my expression for x, right? So that's what I'm going to use there. So I'm going to do, 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 do the derivative of position at time. So my position is this equation. So 0.1 t squared, right? So remember, now we're going to use the power rule, right? And this is from that video 2 and a half, right? Or 2.1 and a half. So you bring your exponent down. So 0.1 times 2. 0.1 times 2 is 0.2 times t to the, and then you decrease your exponent by 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Oh, so it looks like my velocity at time t is 0.2t. Okay, so there we go. So now I can find the velocity at time 6. So the velocity after 6 seconds is 0.2 times 6 gives 1.2, and the units must be meters per second. Okay, so let's check and make sure that this makes sense. This thing should be going faster, right? So let's see what the velocity was at time zero. Well, if I plug zero, let's do it in a different color. If I plug zero in up here, then 0 0.2 times zero gives me zero. Oh, that makes sense because it looks like the slope here is basically horizontal. Okay, whereas this slope that I found... Uh, here, let's do this in, I don't know, how about light blue? This slope represents the slope at this point. Okay, and suppose I wanted the slope after, or the velocity after 10 seconds. That would represent the slope here. Sorry, that was terrible. Let me undo that. That would be the slope right here. I can't get that point to hit. All right, and so that would be just if I plugged 10 into this equation. So that would be 0.2 times 10 is 2 meters a second, right? Okay, so big takeaway, the derivative at time t, or the derivative of position with respect to time is your velocity, all right? All right, so I guess I should probably note here, let me uh, clear this screen off here. I just need to get over the fact that these videos are going to be a little bit longer here with AP. So, sorry. All right, so here. All right. No, so it's worth noting. So what did we just find out? We just found out that the velocity at time t was 0.2t, right? So remember this equation? Vf equals vi plus at. So check it out. Here is my... My velocity at time t represents my final velocity. My 
in no, 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 acceleration is 0.2. My time is my time, and it looks like my VI looks like my VI is just zero. Okay, so. Um, bu, 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 bu. So the acceleration is constant, right? Specifically, it looks like my acceleration here is 0 0.2. Uh, this time doesn't work. 0 0.2 meters per second squared. That's not going to work. Okay. So anyway, there you go. Um, so we could have, if we wanted to, used kinematics. All right. And as we get further into this, you'll kind of learn these tricks. But um, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. All right. So that's that. So here's what we've learned so far. Just to quickly summarize. All right. We've just learned that the derivative uh, of position with respect to time gives you the velocity at time t. Okay. Important thing number one. All right. Let's do another example. All right. So suppose I give you a more complicated equation like this. All right. So here's our equation for the position at time t. All right, and I actually gave some, some instructions here. All right, what we're trying to do for part A is we're trying to find the velocity after four seconds, okay? So it looks to me like it might be zero. See if you can figure out why I'm guessing that. Okay, remember, the velocity represents the slope, and what does the slope at this point look like? It looks like that might be zero, right? Because if you imagine, let me clear off my ink here, if you imagine approaching that point, so over here my slope is, whoa, I don't know what that was, it's popped up. Um, all right, so if you imagine, oh, fiddlesticks. So if you imagine my slope here, it's going to be negative. Down here my slope is negative. Down here it's still negative, but starting to get less negative, right? And then it gets less negative, less negative zero somewhere down there at the bottom and then it gets positive more positive more positive right so my slope is going from a big negative to a smaller negative to a smaller negative to a smaller negative to, to zero to a small positive to a bigger positive to a bigger positive to a bigger positive right so it looks like the slope down here at zero might or at four might be zero but i don't know all right so let's double check and see if we can verify that all right so what i want to do once again is find the velocity t equals four seconds. All right, so let's do that here in red. Okay, so the velocity at time t, remember, that's just the same as the derivative with respect to time, because that's our horizontal axis of our position. And I don't even, this is the, really, technically, this is the definition of velocity, is it's the derivative of position with respect to time. So I'm going to take the derivative of this mess with respect to time. So I'm going to take the 0.4 and multiply. So 0.4 times 0.25 is 1 times t. Let's see. 4 minus 1 is 3. So that's to the third power, right? So for this one, I'm going to go minus, bring the exponent down. 2 times 3 is 6t squared. plus 4t squared is plus 8t, right? Okay, oh, so there it is. There's my equation for velocity at time t. It looks like the equation for the velocity at time t is t cubed minus 6t squared plus 8t, right? Oops, and this is an 8. All right, so now I can find the velocity after 4 seconds. So the velocity after 4 seconds is 4 cubed minus 6 times well, 4 squared plus 8 times 4. So 4 cubed is what? 64 minus 16 times 6 is 96 plus 32. Oh, my pen is getting wonky all of a sudden here. All right, so anyway, add this all up and it does in fact give you zero. Okay? All right, so that is that. So that was part A. Now let's do part B. All right. Part B wants to know the average velocity between t equals 0.5 and t equals 3 seconds. 
So let's see, so after 0.5 seconds, ew, my object is right here somewhere. And after three seconds, it's up here somewhere, right? All right, so there is, I cannot say this enough, this is a thing students mess up all the time, all right? So just a minute ago, I came up with an equation for velocity, all right? Remember, that equation was the equation for the instantaneous velocity, and that is not what this is asking for, all right? Now, if the acceleration is constant, we've learned that you can find the average velocity by doing Vf plus Vi over 2, but only if acceleration, that says acceleration, is constant. All right, if the acceleration is not constant, you can't use that, so don't. All right, if the acceleration is not constant, then the only way to find constant, or I'm sorry, to find average velocity, oh gosh, I don't know about this new program, you guys. Let's see. Okay, so if the acceleration is not constant, then the only way to find average velocity is to use the definition displacement over time, which for us is final position minus initial position over time. Sometimes people write delta t because it's really the change in time. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the position after three seconds. I'm going to find the position after 0.5 seconds, and I'm going to divide it by the time, which is two and a half seconds. Okay, so unfortunately I can't pause with this thing, and I wasn't smart enough to figure this out in the first place. All right, so anyway, you guys can plug and chug the numbers in, right? You're just going to put 3 in, put 0.5 in, subtract them, and then divide by 2.5. All right, and the answer does turn out to be some number of meters per second. Um, I apologize for not having that handy. Okay, so now any points where the object stops. Okay, so... So that's B. All right, so let's go back and do part C. All right, so to do part C, we want to find points where the object stops. Well, a minute ago, we figured out an equation for the velocity at time t, right? And we decided the velocity at time t was t cubed minus 6t squared plus 8t. And if the object stops, that means the velocity is zero. So we're looking for... Um, find t where the velocity at t is zero, right? So we're basically trying to solve this, all right? So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You ought to be able to use your calculator, right, to find roots of a polynomial, okay? Um, the other thing is you can use your calculator. You ought to be able to type that in and just find your uh, maxima and minima, all right? So the idea is Anytime your object stops, your slope is going to be zero, right? All right. Um, so this is a really common trick. Um, the, the, in this case, this is a minimum position, right? And it's a minimum position because it has to stop going backwards before it goes forwards, right? So this is a really common thing. Find a minimum, you just solve for your derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay? Um, so... If I'm losing it here, this might, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so anyway, write down questions, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Um, or if I have it enabled, uh, type in the comments what your questions are, all right? Okay. Um, oh, so we're trying to find the time where the velocity is zero, right? So um, honestly, this happens pretty rarely, but you guys are in calculus, so you got to be able to solve this. So we're trying to find the points where this is zero. So I guess if you're trying to solve a polynomial where it's zero, factor it. So the first thing I notice is all of my terms here have a t in them. So let's factor out a t. You get t times t squared minus 6t plus 8, and then factor it. So this is t times, let's see, t squared minus 6t plus 8. I think I can do t minus 2 and t minus 4, right? And yeah, if you follow that out, sure enough, it gives you this. So it looks like my zeros are at, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, right. So the velocity is zero. So uh, V of T equals zero at T equals what? Zero. 
2 and 4, right? So the velocity is 0 at t equals 0, t equals 2, and t equals 4, right? So notice what I just found there is the zeros of the velocity equation, not the zeros of the position equation, all right? And so that occurs once here, once up here, and once down here, all right? All right, so those were all position time graphs, and we did that in 20 minutes. Uh, so I think we, I've just got one more uh, little sort of chunk of examples here to walk through with you, which is what happens if I give you a velocity time graph? All right, so to be clear, the big thing is what we just learned here is this. So last year, remember, we learned that the average is displacement over, I'm going to use this, delta time, right? It's how much the position changes divided by how much the time changes, right? And so we just generalized this by saying that um, velocity at time t is instantaneously the change in position over the change in time, right? So now let's look at acceleration. Last year we learned that average acceleration is how much your velocity changes per unit time, right? So by the same logic, that means that acceleration at an instantaneous moment should be the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Okay? And if you take one more, yeah, right. Yes. Cool. All right. So let's take a look and see how we can use this. All right. This is actually kind of a quick summary of everything that's in this video. So if that's enough for you, then great. But um, here we go. All right. So velocity at time t. So you can pick two points and find the slope, right? So I'm going to do this two different ways just to make a point. All right. So first of all, let's do it old school. Let's find the slope. So let's pick two points on the line. So up here and let's do down here, all right? So between these two points, my rise so slope is rise over run. So my rise, I went from 10 to negative 10. So that's a decrease of 20 meters per second. And that change took a run of five seconds, right? So that means that I'm decreasing by four meters per second per second, or negative four meters per second squared, right? Okay. Um, so there's my acceleration, right? Okay. Now, the other way you could do it is this. So let me uh, clear the ink here. Somewhere there's a way to do this. Uh, it's not going to work. All right, so what I was going to say is the other way we can do this is this. Suppose we knew the equation for the line. If we knew the equation for the line, then we could just take a derivative, right? So let's do that. We just learned a moment ago that acceleration at time t is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, right? So here's the equation for my velocity. Notice the slope is negative 4, and the y-intercept is 10, right? So if you take the derivative of this, this is the derivative with respect to time of negative 4t plus 10, right? So this is t to the first power, so use the power rule. Bring it down, negative 4 times 1 gives you negative 4 times t to the 0. So you get negative 4, right? Plus the derivative of a constant is 0. Ah, so there you go. There's your acceleration. All right. So let's see what this note says. I don't remember. Oops. This is not what I wanted to happen. Eraser, eraser. Why am I dumb? There it is. If you're OCD about me erasing, you're going to have to get over it with this program. There we go. So yeah, so once again, the acceleration here is constant, so we don't really need these calculus. All right, cool, we talked about that. All right, now what if I give you something like this? And I believe this is our last slide. Yes. Okay, um, so now we've got this other uh, equation that's a little bit more complicated, right? So it's a parabola. Um, and I think there's a typo there. I don't think, I think I have an extra negative. Um, Oh my gosh, this is terrible. All right, let's fix this. This is velocity at time t is, uh, oh shoot, um, t 
squared minus 6t plus 8 is what that is. Okay, so, um, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, it wants us to find the acceleration at time 5 seconds. All right, well, so that what that is really asking you for here, this guy, is asking you for the slope of this, right? How quickly is our velocity changing at this specific instant? So the acceleration at time t is the derivative of velocity with respect to time by definition. So that's the derivative with respect to time of t squared minus 6t plus 8. Take the derivative, right? So let's see, we're going to get uh, no, my pen. So the derivative of t squared is 2t. Derivative of 6t is just 6. Derivative of 8 is 8. Okay, so now I'm just going to so that's my acceleration at time t. So now I can just plug in 5. So the acceleration at time 5 is two times five minus six, which gives us four meters per second squared. I'm sorry, these sixes are not cooperating for some reason. All right, so to find the average acceleration, pause the video and see if you can figure out how to find the average acceleration. I'll erase. Okay, so once again, in order to find the average acceleration, there's one and only one way to do it. Average acceleration is change in velocity over time. So for us, that means we want to find the velocity after six seconds, the velocity after one second, and divide it by the time between the two. So the time between one and six is five seconds. So again, this one's just kind of plug and chug, just like our average velocity one was, right? So I'll let you guys do that on your own because I'm running long on my video. All right, so here's another example. This is similar to something we just did a minute ago. My wife is walking into my house right now and probably wondering why I'm talking to myself. So there you go. She comes in. Sorry, I can't pause. Do, 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 do. So now we want to find the minimum velocity. So it looks like, according to my graph, that minimum velocity occurs. Bum, 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 bum. Where does it occur? Right down here, right? So that is, remember, calculus, a local minimum, right? So how do you find a minimum? Oh, that's where the derivative is zero, right? Okay, so think about this. Check it out. If we look at our slopes, my slope is negative, plus negative, less negative, zero, and then it becomes positive, more positive, more positive, right? And we want the point where the derivative is zero. So the minimum velocity represents the point where the acceleration is zero or equivalently where the slope is zero, right? Okay, that'll be a real common thing in your calculus too, where you need to find the maximum and minimum of a function. And the way you're gonna do it is find where the derivative is zero. All right, so let's do it. So um, you need to set the derivative equal to zero. That means taking the derivative. So here we go, the derivative of velocity with respect to time is, well, let's see, t squared derivative is 2t minus derivative of uh, 60 is just 6. Ah, okay, so here we go. Acceleration at time t. Uh, set this equal to 0, and then oops, that's a 0. Holy moly. All right, so that's a 0. <laughs> so I solve it. So then you get 2t equals 6, uh, and then t equals 3 seconds, right? So there's our answer, just as the graph uh, predicted. All right, and last but not least, the times at which the object changes direction. Oops. So we want to find right now, this is the last thing we got to do, the times at which the object changes direction. So I'm going to erase this whole mess. All right, and let's see if we can figure this out. Times at which it changes direction. Oh, well, that just means the times where the velocity goes from being positive to negative. Ah, it changes direction right there, right? Because that's where the velocity is zero. And it happens again over here. So according to my graph, it looks like it happens at two and four seconds. But basically, 
If it's changing direction, that means it has to stop moving, so your velocity is zero. So we want to solve this equation, v of t equals zero. And since our equation was this, we just want to factor it in. This video has an unusually large amount of factor compared with what you'll see in the homework. So if you factor this guy, you end up getting, uh, I think this is the same thing we just had, right? t minus 2 times t minus 4. And so the velocity will be 0 if t is 2 or t is 4. All right. So there you go. That was my first ever video on my, my, my computer here, which is called something. I'm not going to do product placement. All right. There you go. Enjoy.